Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey watching Rebecca and Zied on 90 Day Fiance. Let's get to the show. Let's sit down and talk for a minute, please. Yes. Okay. Last night was pretty rough. We were fighting because of the shirt that I was wearing in a club. And today, Zied and I aren't really talking. But tonight, I have to go meet his parents. I definitely don't want to be fighting when we when we meet his mother and father. All right, so this is a good move. They're going to meet his parents, and they have some things to talk about, and she is saying, hey, let's talk about it. It's a very healthy thing to do. Some of the couples on this show, they don't do that, and they just power forward because they, I assume, are not predicting that a conversation is going to go very well. And so for Rebecca, she has trust that, okay, you know, let's work this out. Or if it doesn't work out, it's better to know now than later. This is something that I wish more people felt in the moment, which is, okay, I have this this anger or this unresolved thing with my spouse and I can't, it's going to be hard for me to move forward, or I'm guessing it's going to be hard for them to move forward. It's going to be hard for us to move forward until we talk about this. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of worried about how it's going to go, but it's better to talk about it than to not talk about it. I, I wish more people said that, you know, because the worry that people will have is, well, if we talk about it, it could go terribly. And then if it goes terribly, then we could break up and that would be terrible. But if that does happen, then it's kind of better to know that, particularly when you're dating in the beginning, than it is to have a sort of a very terrible relationship that the entire time. It's better to know right away if it's a terrible relationship. Now, there are ways to open a, con a conversation like this, and there are ways to open it in a bad way. So, and this John Gottman goes into a lot as well. How do you open a conversation like this? Very, very important, okay? <laughs> Because a common way to open a conversation like this would be something like, so from Rebecca's standpoint, it would be something like, so what's wrong with you? Why were you so angry last night? How come you're, you're such a jerk face? You know, not that those words, but that sentiment. And then it immediately puts the person on the defensive because they're hurt and they don't, then now they have to defend themselves. So how do you open conversations like this? Well, there are a lot of different ways, a lot of different principles, but you want to stick to your feelings. That's the general rule. And of course, if you need help with this, find your own couples therapist or individual therapist. I, I work with individual clients on this as well. They will talk with me about an upcoming conversation they're going to have with their spouse. And so we'll talk about it. So for Rebecca, she should stick to her feelings because they're not debatable and they're not likely to cause defensiveness, not likely, or they're less likely to cause defensiveness. So something like, so I just want to tell you where I'm coming from. I thought we had talked about my dress and, you know, I thought I explained to you. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm already opening this in a bad way because <laughs> it's critical. Um, so if I, if I just sticked with Rebecca's feelings, it would be, so last night was really scary to me and I was hurt that you weren't listening to me. I felt like you were pushing me away, which which hurts me because I, I want to be close to you. Okay, so you hear that I'm saying I'm hurt by you, not because you're a jerk face, but because I want to be close to you. So you want to sprinkle those kinds of things and it sort of sweetens the pot, if, if you know what I'm saying. I love you. I want to be close to you. And when you distance yourself from me, it really hurts me. And it scares me because I, I worry that this is how we're going to deal with things. I was also scared that you didn't really care about my wishes in terms of how I dress. Now I understand, and this is when you would validate what he has been saying or what you think he's feeling. I, I understand that we're in, I'm in a different culture right now. I understand this puts you in a weird position when we're in public. I don't want to do that to you, but this is where I'm coming from, you know, that kind of stuff. What do you think? Tell me how you're feeling. And then from his side, he would say something like, well, for me, I felt like you were disrespecting my culture. I felt like you didn't really care, and, and that hurt me. And I get that where, where you're coming from in terms of your history, but while we're here, could, could we please just do things a little differently? When we go to the States, I promise you, you can dress however you want, but here it's so rigid and it's so weird compared to where you're coming from. 
And it would just be so much less stressful for me if you could just not dress like that when we're in this country. As soon as we go to the States, I guarantee you, everything will be fine. I won't, I won't have any thoughts about the way you dress. I don't know if that's even how he feels, but it, it, it's things along those lines. And there are many other possibilities. Let's see what they do. Let's see how she opens it up. That's, that's the key thing here. I want to be able to get in that place where we both feel good about this relationship. Before I came here, I was hoping we would get engaged and then... All right, so a good thing she's doing already is contact, physical touch. To do that in the as you open a, re, a conversation like this will definitely help. It, it has a calming effect on the person. It communicates that you care and that you love the person, that you're, you're not just there to blast them. You're here to, because you want to uh, preserve their relationship. So uh, when, when I see couples doing that in couples therapy, I know that that is a strength we can definitely rely on when they are in conversations like this. Even if, even when you have conversations like this, even if you're kind of like, I don't wanna touch his knee right now, if you can find it in yourself to reach out for you know, both people, and I would hope that he would put his hand on her, her hand or something along those lines. Let's see what they do. Bring him to America and marry him. I just want to talk about what happened last night. Uh, last night made me so much angry. Last All right, so pretty good. She just op op had an open-ended question. I just want to talk about what happened last night. And he says, what happened last night made me very angry. That's, that's good. So he's talking about his emotions. He's not being critical of, here, of her. Uh, let's see where they go from here. Last night, really. Don't you understand it's not good because this is my country and I know my country what? He's, he keeps saying that, which it might mean a lot to him and might seem self-evident to him, but it clearly hasn't resonated with her. And he's already said that over and over again. I don't think she is getting what he's trying to say with that. Or maybe she is and she just doesn't agree with it. I don't know. But he keeps saying that. In my country, this is the way we do that. In my country, we, you know, maybe providing more of an explanation would help her to understand. Because for her... I'm guessing what she's thinking is, okay, fine. In your country, you, you are massively sexist to women and control women, and you tell women how to dress, and I don't want to do that. So welcome to me. <laughs> you know, like that's who I am. Great, your country is sexist. That, I'm not going to, now that's not, I don't know if she's interpreting it that way, but maybe she is. But maybe if he were to say, Look, things are just very different here. There's a lot of different associations we have with the way people dress, men and women. And it's just very stressful for me to think about all the thoughts that people have about the two of us and maybe to personalize it to him so that she could have empathy for him. It's like, look, you're free to dress the way you want to dress, but I'm telling you, it's so stressful for me to be in public with you if you're going to dress like that because... I, all I can think about is all the negative thoughts that I know everyone is having about both of us, you and me. And I just, I don't want to deal with that. When we go to the States, no one's going to think about that. And, and when we're there, then I won't worry about it because I just, it's just very, str I don't know, something along those lines. Anyway, I keep talking. Let's listen to him. <laughs> Okay, she has to listen to me. What does that mean? You know, expand on that. I think I don't think she's understanding him at this point. In your country, all the women there clothes so sexy. It's okay, no problem. Here, woman Arabic, so much no good here. You not know uh, my life here. You not know the people here. Okay, so I think he's getting a little bit more specific. You don't know my life here. You don't know the people here. You don't know all of this. Okay, now there's a language barrier here too as well. So that doesn't help because this is a pretty nuanced conversation. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm having a hard time talking about it because there's just so many nuances and, and landmines, frankly. You don't know all this is. I understand that we're in Tunisia. Yeah, that's good, yes. Okay. 
I want to respect that I'm in your country, but I also need you to work on your jealousy because I can't handle you being angry in this relationship so much. I know. Okay, that was pretty good. So she is saying, okay, I get it. I, I, I'm in your country, I'm in Tunisia, and things are different here. But I need you to work on your jealousy. And this is actually a question we'll just have to see as time goes on if they stay together. Is he generally jealous or is he only reacting from a masculine expectation within the Tunisian culture? Or is he generally jealous, meaning, and jealousy comes from worry. When you worry that you're going to lose someone that you want to be with, then you have a lot of different available things to deal with that. One of the ways that some people learn to deal with it is to alert to the other person through anger and jealousy and control to stop doing what they're doing. Other men are looking at you, which makes me worried that they're going to take you away from me and I, or they're going to touch you in a way that I don't want to see. And so I'm going to have to control you in order to get you to not do that, and then I can feel safe. Now that, of course, is not functional. It's not fair to another human being. And ultimately, it often causes people to drift away at the least emotionally. But it is something that people learn early in life. Either it was modeled to them by their parents, or it was the only thing that worked when they were young. So, uh, you know, it's important to conceptualize jealousy that way, and, and hopefully they can hopefully talk about it. Usually people don't, but let's see what they say here. No, I know. I know this. All right. Okay, that was good. So, he, you know, she says, you need to work on your jealousy. And he said, yes, I know this. I, I need to work on that. So that was great. But he seems to be shutting down. I don't know what thoughts are going on in his mind. It, the conversation looks like it's coming to an end, which isn't isn't great. I would wish they'd have more conversation. Let's see what they do here. I don't want to fight when we go see your parents. Yes, me too. Okay. Okay. Uh, no talking with my family for last night no. for drink, okay? That's no good in my family no, because this is Arabic people. I am absolutely terrified to meet his family. <laughs> we'll be staying a night with his mother and father and they're very strict, conservative mother. Okay, so they seem to have at least resolved it for now. Uh, let's see if it crops up again in the future. You saw that he did, in fact, put his hand on her hand, which is fantastic. So I think mission accomplished. A, a lot of couples on this show have a hard time with that and have a hard time communicating about that. If I were there, I would want to go further into it to really make sure that they understand each other because... I'm not sure if they really got each other in that moment, such that it will reduce the likelihood of a future conflict in this area in the future. So me, as a watcher of this, I'm not confident that they're not going to have another fight about this, given that they didn't really go into it in a deep way. But who knows? Let's continue watching. Muslims. Baby, do I wear my clothes under it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, because uh, so much good. Okay, babe. Yes. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of 90 Day Fiance Reaction from me. <laughs> and everyone out there, please take care of yourself. And also, if you haven't already found our audio podcast on your phone, I've been doing an audio podcast for over 12 years. We have over, I don't know, we have like 1,200 episodes, audio episodes, so you can listen to it on your phone. And that's also something that you can listen to <laughs> in addition to these videos. And please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.